Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on this video saying I subscribed. Let's get into it. The indigenously developed cavalry engine was supposed to power the Tejas light combat aircraft, but with the delay in the program, and the depleting squadron strength of the Indian Air Force, the Tejas fighter jets were fitted with the General Electric's F-404 afterburning turbofan engine. The gas turbine research establishment is now running two separate successor engine programs, the K-9 program and the K-10 program. According to media reports, the AMCA will be powered by a domestically manufactured K9 or K10 engine, which is currently undergoing development, and serious work on the airframe of AMCA can be expected to start after the cavalry engines are ready. The RDO and Safran have planned to start integration by early 2019, and major ground trials will be carried out throughout 2019, and the first flight will be conducted by 2020. A derivative of the cavalry engine will also be developed to power India's unmanned combat air vehicle. The long-delayed FOC certification of the Tejas light combat aircraft is just a few flights away for the program, and the aircraft has a crash-free developmental flight program, which deserves great appreciation for the entire team. While in the development of contemporary fighter jet even by advanced countries, aircraft have been lost while going through developmental trials, and it's a rare feat that India's stages program will achieve its final full operational capability certification without any incident in its entire developmental cycle. According to latest media reports, the cost of each Brahmos system is more than 30 crore rupees, and the high price is preventing the armed forces from ordering more of these systems, and they are finding it difficult to invest in the further development of the system in view of its high cost. The Indian Army and the Air Force wants Brahmos Aerospace to reduce down the price of the system, to make it more affordable for both internal and external markets. China has developed the HD-1 system, and have claimed it to be a cheaper and better version of the Brahmos system, and would be supplied to Pakistan in future. The first meeting of the India-Japan Space Dialogue is scheduled to take place in March 2019, where the space agencies of the two countries will focus on surveillance and maritime domain awareness of the waters in the East China Sea, the South China Sea, and the Indian Ocean. The India-Japan Space Dialogue was announced by Prime Minister Modi and his Japanese counterpart in October 2018, at the end of the annual summit of both countries. According to latest media reports, the EDF Group of France has submitted a techno-commercial proposal to the Indian government for the nuclear power plant. A techno-commercial offer is an important step in the negotiation process, as it will help the two sides to determine the cost of the project. The proposed plant will be the largest nuclear power plant in the country, which will have six reactors with a capacity of 1,650 megawatt each. According to latest media reports, India has formally took over operations at Chabahar port, and Iran handed over the port during a first meeting of the follow-up committee for the implementation of the Chabahar agreement between Iran, Afghanistan and India. In a separate development, Iran and India are on the verge of finalizing a preferential trade agreement, and each side will reduce tariffs on around 100 products purchased from the other country. After the recent successful launch of a Colombian satellite by the Indian Space Agency, another South American country is getting ready for launching its satellite in 2020. A representative of the Brazilian Space Agency has said, that the launch of Amazonia 1 satellite with PSLV in 2020 is confirmed, and it will be its first satellite for Earth observation.